Hello everyone, and welcome to my Japanese Blade uh, slash Blade Beast deck profile. Um, this is probably going to be the last one I'll put on the channel, um, but just wanted to kind of get it out there for you guys to look at. So, um, the obviously the flag will be Katana World, and the buddy of this deck is Blade Beast the Blinder Mikazuke Munechika Ribi. Um, a lot of text on him, but he's really good. Um, he costs two gauge and gains a soul from the top of the deck. Um, all Japanese blade on the field cannot be destroyed or bounced to hand by your opponent's card effects, and they gain 10,000 power and a critical. Pretty solid stuff there. And then his named ability, Stance Under the Moon, is when he enters the field. Um, you can put up to three Japanese blade with different card names from your deck into the drop and shuffle your deck. Then if you have five or more Japanese blades in the drop, uh, you gain two gauge and you draw two cards. So he basically pays for himself, plus you get one more card back. And then he has quite a few red abilities, but move, penetrate, double attack, and soul guard. So um, overall solid offensive um, card with uh, resource gain as well. So. Moving on is starting with the size zeros. We just run one copy of White Dew Blade Beast Murasame Maru. Um, when he attacks, you pay life and you can equip a Japanese blade from the drop zone. Um, and you have to pay the equip cost as well. At the end, end of the turn, you, you destroy the card. Um, he's here for just a couple, he's more of a supportive card, but a couple minor reasons. First off, he is at least a different Japanese blade um, that you can get in the drop. Um, and if your item accidentally gets into the drop before you can equip it, like let's say it was in the starting gauge or something like that, you can at least um, attack with him to equip the item from the drop. I only run him at one, so if you see him, cool. If not, not a big deal. Um, but he just kind of helps if you have kind of like a oh crap situation with a car with a item you need in the drop zone. Next up is. Still size zeros, and it's going to be four copies of Weaver of Dream and Fate Miko. Um, her Both her abilities are, I suppose, useful for Japanese Blades, but it's really the latter ability that's useful, but we'll go over both. Um, the first is, if she's on the field and your item would leave the field, you can sacrifice her to the drop zone if you do the item remains on the field. So a little bit of item protection if it comes to that, but like I said, usually I don't use her for that. And the second ability is... If you're being direct attacked, you can put this card from the drop zone to the bottom of your deck and pay a gauge. If you do, the attack is nullified and you gain 3 life. Um, Japanese Blade is known for not having a lot of defensive options, and you're usually open center or very minimal monster coverage um, on the field in general anyways, so you're going to usually be direct attacked. So she helps uh, mitigate that. So Even though she's not archetype specific, she is still a helpful um, attack null. Next up with size 1s is the ever important tutor, um, Blade Beast of Ghost Slash Toji Kiri Yasutsuna. Um, he is a size 1 that costs 2 gauge, and when he enters the field, you can grab any Japanese blade, monster, or item from your deck and add it to your hand. Um, and if you have one Japanese blade in the drop, he gains a critical and penetrate, so probably with the gauge cost, you can at least get one of the cards to be Japanese blade. But he's primarily for the tutor. Um, but honestly, there's really not any other. Site actually, there is no other size ones in the deck, so you could probably just have him along with Mikazuki Munichika um, and just have you know a pretty solid board. So, nothing super out of the ordinary with him. Next up is our, our number one consistency card for practically every Katana World deck, and that is Guardian Electro Beast Godio. Um, you only call her once per turn, and when she enters the field, you can look at the top three cards of your deck and add one to your hand. It can be anything, um, and you don't have to show your opponent what you grab, but just kind of indicate to your opponent that you at least grab a card. Um, but yeah, really good consistency card. Um, not meant to be on the field for very long. Just kind of play, uh, grab a card, and get rid of her. Move on. Next up, uh, with the other size two is the Buddy, which we already kind of covered, but I'll just kind of put them here, but I run four copies of them, so um, helps filter out the deck, like I said, of potentially any useless uh, Blade Beast you don't want in the deck, so you can draw into other stuff as well, I forgot to mention that, but yeah, I mean, he's basically a 15,000, three crit, penetrate, double attack, uh, big boy, that gains you resources. Next up for the last size two is two copies of the Impact Mikazuke Munichika Forbidden Art Blade Deity Descends. Oh, that's a mouthful. Um, you only call, call it if you have four more different Japanese blades in the drop, which should be easy, especially with the Rebi Mikazuke Munichika. Um, the call cost is three gauge, so he's a little expensive, but you can mitigate it in other ways. Um, and you put a Japanese blade from the field into a soul. 
And if there are seven or more different Japanese blades, he gets a crit, and this card's attack can be nullified if it's attacking alone. And he, the move, penetrate, double attack, and soul guard is innate that is not dependent on um, the seven or more cards in the drop requirement. Also, um, quick thing, keep in mind if, let's say you want to call the impact monster over Mikazuki Munichika, um, you ha if he has a soul, so let's say, I know this is not obviously like going to be a real soul, but let's say he has a normal soul, um, and you want to impact call on him, he actually loses the soul um, based on the wording of the impact. So you do not gain the soul that he had initially. It's not going to be like this. You're going to lose the soul. It's going to be like this. So just kind of wanted to kind of put that out there because um, wording does matter. It says to put it from the field into his soul. Um, it does not say play it on top of a card. If it said play it on top of a card on the field, then it would keep all the souls below it. So just kind of keep that in mind with... Um, gameplay. Next up is three copies of Blade Beast of 16th Night, Green Princess Ichimonji. Um, she's not meant to be on the field for very long. Um, her discard to gauge and draw two is just what really is kind of the useful part of her effect. Um, also, I run Hiding Oni in the deck, so um, you can always just sack her soul to uh, gauge and draw two. Um, yeah, she's not really meant to be on the field very long. Worst case, maybe turn zero, you play her, pitch a card to gauge and draw two, you swing with her, and, you know, move on. And she blocks a couple attacks with move. Um, but she's not your main monster. Also helps just get a different Japanese blade into the drop. Moving on to items is... Famous Blade, Kogane Chidori. Um... It costs two gauge, so a little expensive. Um, its attack can't be reduced if it's attacking alone. And when you cast a spell, you gain a gauge, and Kogane Shirori gains a uh, double attack for the turn. Um, this triggers on both turns, and obviously during the opponent's turn, you're only just going to get the gauge. The double attack is pointless. Um, but hey, you know, at least after two spells, you basically have regained the gauge cost for the weapon, and everything else is free. Um, and with Mikazuki Munichika's uh, 10,000 power and a crit gain, I mean, it's going to be a 15,003 crit that can't be reduced if attacking alone. So it can be a beefy, scary boy with double attack. Next up, um, it's not a great item, but it's really only viable because it's the only thing that we have. Um, it is Ex Exquisite Sword Crane Princess, so this is Ichimonji's weapon. Um, you only equip it if you have a blade beast on the field, you pay a gauge, and you can just equip it with other with another Japanese blade, um, other than itself. So you can't have two copies of, you can't equip two copies of this, but you can run the Kogane Chidori and this on the field at the same time. So I mean there's no other option, so you might as well run it. <clears throat> it's really the only reason why it's a good card. <laughs> Stats wise, it's not really that great. Um, and it also, it's a seven one, so I mean with Mikazuki Munichika, uh, it'd be a seventeen K two crit. Um, beat stick basically so not terrible but you know nothing nothing super crazy to write home about next up is the set spell for blade beast voice of the blade um you can only set one of uh these on the field at any one time um the gauge cost of blade beast is reduced by one not japanese blade blade beast so blade beasts are the monsters japanese blades are both are really anything spells items uh i was gonna say traps this is a new Yu-Gi-Oh. spell items impacts monsters um, but Blade Beasts are only, let me just get a little bit closer because the text is actually considerably small. Um, but Blade Beasts are only the monsters. So the items you still have to pay for like normal. But even like Mukaze, uh, Mikazuke, Munichika, or Ichimonji, um, their costs can be reduced. And uh, Toji Gear, Yasutsuna. Um, and then the other effect is you can discard a Japanese blade, any card, no matter what kind of card it is. Um, and if you do, you check the top three cards and you can put up to two Japanese blades from among them to your hand and the rest go to drop. Um, it just gra even if it's like redundant cards you don't need, just use it for gate charge and draw fodder later. It's just a good hand consistency card. On to spe oh, on to normal spells now. It's the only set spell we have <clears throat> is sword skill of Zante Setetsu. Um, at counter speed, you can choose a Japanese blade, and the next time it would be destroyed, it remains on the field. Um, then if it's a monster, you can give a counter attack. So you can use this if your opponent tries to destroy your item because Japanese... Bla oh, actually, the Mikazuki Munichika does have field protection. But this is usually used for the monsters, um, so they remain on the field. And then counterattack is nice if it goes off, but usually doesn't because um, of all the anti-destruction effects. Um, also, it, it remains on the field. It remains on the field. Okay. 
So keep in mind though, this would still trigger penetrate. It doesn't nullify the destruction. So keep that in mind if you're trying to stop penetrate. It does not stop that. Next up is, speaking of penetrate, the thing you use to try to get around penetrate is Celestial Arch Returning Water. Um, mainly used, you can use it during your main phase if you want. Um, you, if you do, I mean, you'd certainly gain a gauge from Kogane Chidori. Um, but you destroy a monster on the field and you gain a gauge draw and gain a life. Um, but kind of the main purpose of this deck, of this card, is to destroy your center monster when it's being attacked with Penetrate, so then you don't get Penetrated. And then during your opponent's turn, if you play this, again, you still gain a gauge from Kogane Chirori as well. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it with that one. And then next up is three copies of Hiding Oni, like I mentioned before. Um, you can use, you drop a soul from a card on the field, so it can be any card, so you, in this case it will be the monsters, um, to gain a gauge and draw two. And again, keep in mind if you play if you have Kogane Chidori, you gain two gauge and draw two, so you know it's just more plusing. Um, but yeah, you'd mainly drop the gauge of either Ichimonji or Mikazuki Mune Chika. I mean, Muge Mikazuki Mune Chika, that is a tongue twister. Already has a soul and he has anti destruction, so it's pretty safe to remove his soul, and he's still safe until at least you know your opponent's turn. So yeah, just a little more gauge gain and a little more drawing for a deck that kind of. Sometimes has consistency problems, um, but I think with Godio and other, everything else, I think it's in a, in a pretty solid spot right now. Anyways, next up is the last spell, Clear Serenity. Um, just run four copies if you need more gauge, um, especially the impacts. Um, the impact monster, and actually the last card here will be the normal impact, but they cost three gauge. Um, the normal impact is three gauge as well, wow. Yeah, so... Um, one little nice strategy you can do, though, is if you have no gauge and you f finish all your normal attacks for the turn and your opponent thinks you're all done and maybe they've kind of based their attack nulls based on what they foresee as threats on the field, um, you can kind of come out of left field by playing Clear Serenity and then the Mikazuke Munichika impact or the next impact I'll bring. So I'm um, kind of bring a little bit of uh, sudden uh, surprises for your opponent, so to, so to speak. Um, so, yep, run four copies of Clear Serenity. And also, keep in mind, with Clear, Clear Serenity, too, it can be played on either turn, just before I forget. Um, so, with Kogane Chirori, if you play it on your opponent's turn, you get four gauge, essentially. So, you know, it's it's a nice boost in, in stats. It's essentially counter hyper speed at that point, so or hyper energy at that point. And then last is the Impact... Uh, the normal impact blade beast formation, shape of the elite. Um, you only cast it if you have five or more different Japanese blades in the drop. Um, pay three gauge, and you stand all Japanese blades, and they can attack uh, in another attack phase. Um, keep in mind too that that means you get another attack phase, which should, which as far as I can understand and as far as I've ever known, um, also means you get another uh, final phase. So if you let's say you have both of these in hand and you somehow have six gauge. Uh, have fun, play both of them. <laughs> like, I can't say it's ever happened to me, but hey, if you can do it, more power to you. Um, and they also mainly, I don't usually uh, expect to cast impacts, but they also just help for the sake of different Japanese blades and the drop for different effects. So that's it as far as the main board goes. And then we'll go on to the sideboard. Sideboard, I run four copies of Buddy Block, um, mainly for the latter effect of if your opponent's attacked four times or more during the turn, you can't take any more damage from attacks. Um, some decks can be insane, like Leviathan. Um, they can attack like good five plus times in a turn, uh, and sometimes way more than five, but you know at least five easily. So um, really, you could just kind of slap this on the deck and you'd be fine. Um, I don't really know if I would really take anything out. Maybe worst case, the Zante Setetsus, but they do count as a Japanese blade, so I um, mean, potentially be gimping yourself as far as how many uh, different Japanese blades you need in the drop, so probably safe bet just to throw them in. It's four copies. You'll probably see them pretty consistently. Um, next up is three copies of Cherry Blossom Dance. Um, again, this is to kind of mess with decks that call from the drop, um, and it's a set spell, so it stays on the field. Kind of get ahead of myself with my explanations. But anyways, and then also, which is a nice little bonus, is if an item would leave the field, you can sacrifice the set spell to the drop if you do it remains on the field. So there's really no downside to this card, only plus side. So, yeah, just run that. Oh, let's not have the side deck be right on top of my main deck. And then last, uh, they kind of go together. I guess I'll just kind of show them all 
at the same time, but Secret Sword Lethal Formation and Secret Sword Wave Splitting Arc Fangs. I'll kind of do it like this so you can kind of read both cards. Um, but I'll read Splitting Arc Fangs first. But um, you only cast it during a battle when an attack was nullified. You gain two, you pay two gauge, you deal two damage to your opponent, stand a card. It doesn't have to be the card that attacked, but you just stand a card on the field. And if it was cast from Secret Sword Lethal Formation, you gain three gauge. So that's nice, um, which is why I do run two copies of Secret Sword Lethal Formation. Let me see if I can at least kind of, there we go, kind of get them all lined up right here. Um, and then Secret Sword Lethal Formation is just a set impact where you, when you play it, um, you grab any card from your hand, deck, or drop and put it face down. And then um, you can cast Secret Swords from it by Pants Cast Cost. So that's obviously why you have, you know, Secret Sword Wave Splitting Arc Fang. So, um, really, even though you have one copy of Splitting Arc Fang and two copies of Secret Sword, um, you're really kind of running four copies because this can essentially, this is, the Secret Swords are essentially extra copies of Wave Splitting with the added bonus of gaining three gauge. Um, so, yeah, it's just kind of a nice little extra. If your opponent, if you know your opponent plays a lot of attack nulls, this can kind of come out of nowhere and just kind of surprise them. And also, you get three gauge, so then you could play your Impact Monster, your regular Japanese Blade Impact, uh, afterwards if you wanted to, so... That's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions or anything, just feel free to leave a comment. Um, but that's kind of my plans. Um, if you have any, yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, yeah, have a good day.